Hello everyone, in today's lab I'm going to have us all take a break from 3D modeling and we're going to start to talk about materials, textures, um, changing colors on a, on a material and um, I'm also going to basically introduce us to the three primary texture maps that we'll be using this semester. We're going to be using a um, diffuse or texture or color map. Um, all of them are the same or also known as albedo. We're also going to talk about specular maps, which affects the shine of how things shine from lighting in your scene, as well as a bump map slash normal map. And we're going to be using normal maps, but it goes on the bump map um, section of it. But we're going to, we'll get to that. And the normal map or a bump map is um, basically a texture map that gives us the illusion of depth. So what am I talking about, right? So on this material here, um, I have this set as a Fong named a blin. Let's just switch it to a blin. There we go. Um, so on this material here, we are going to, I'm gonna rename it. Um, this is an old file that I did. I, I modeled this a, a while back number of years ago probably um, and I want to show you the difference between maps and some of the different materials and, and section and properties and settings in, in these materials so um, bump maps work off of black and white that's this one right here black and white whereas in you know in every shade in between of grays light gray dark gray etc etc um, so it works on a black and white color scale now a normal map works off of RGB, which is red, green, blue uh, color uh, scale. So basically, with it, with the bump map, with only X, with with black and white, it can only read the light in two different directions. So even if you're rotating around, it doesn't really change anything. Where as a normal map can, because it works off of red, green, and blue, so it's able to detect. Um, light differently from all three directions for red, green, and blue, X, Y, and Z, um, whereas the bump map can't. So that's the main difference between a color or a uh, bump map and a normal map. And we're gonna be using normal maps this semester. Um, but I also will show you how to do a bump map. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is specularity and specular textures. So specularity is a um, and we're going to get into more detail on this as the semester goes through, but specular right here where you see says specular color, what specularity does is it controls the um, shine of how the light is hit. So, and then the color is self-explanatory. That's like your base colors and textures and things like that. So let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. In Photoshop, I've got three maps open. It says gloss, but we're going to use this as our defeat or as our specular, um, our albedo. That's another term for it. Um, also known as your color map, texture map, diffuse map, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those, if you ever hear me use those terms, or if you ever hear anyone else using those terms, you'll know what it is. Now this texture map um, is just the color. So this is like all the wood grain and the handles and things like that. That's on my model. The gloss map here, we're going to use this as our specular map because it's a pretty good example for it. You'll see where all these little nicks and scratches and wear and tear is on each part of this um, coffee table. And then we also have, ooh, whoa, 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 control Z that. Um, and then we also have our normal map. And if I zoom in, you'll start to see some of these wood grains and, and how it creates that illusion of depth. Here's a good little wood grain scene here. Um, and it creates that illusion of depth without actually um, having the geometry in there. So they're really great um, texture maps to know about. And these are your three core ones that you need for pretty much any model you do. And after that, you can always add additional ones, but these are your core ones. We're only gonna focus on these this semester. So. I want to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go to my color map, right? And I want to show you what it'll look like. 
textures, albedo, and open. And then I'm going to tap six on my keyboard so I can see the, what the actual texture looks like. So you'll see here, here is my texture, right? It looks a little wonky, something happened there, but no big deal. Um, and you can see all the, the wood grain. Now you'll also see that that shine, it comes across it just like straight flat. Now I want to show you what it looks like with the specular map on it, the color, specular color it says here. Um, and this works off of black and white. we are go to that gloss one, but it's we're, in this case we're gonna use it as our specular. And now when I shine around this, you'll see where all that wear and tear is on this map. And, and you see all the scratches and things. And that's from the specular map because now the software knows how to read this and where it should be shiny and where it shouldn't. Now, obviously it's shining way too much, but either or, um, neither here nor there, it's just an example. So the last thing I wanna show you is the uh, bump map or normal map. And we're gonna go to our bump mapping here. And we're gonna go to normal. And you'll see automatically it just switched a lot of that. Um, and try and, oh, let me click off of it. It made it darker. And you should, there we go. You start to see some of that ingrained depth. And that's all from the normal map. Now we know the scratches and the wear and tear is from the um, specular map, but this type of detail here, I really need an extra light in here so you can see it better, um, is from the, right there, all that ingrained wood is from the normal map. So that's how that works. So pretty good example. Um, and when you put everything together, I guess I could drag this over here. Let's do, click on here. I'll click on here. Oh, and here's how I can adjust the lighting. Let me make this. And now you can actually see, this is sort of a final render of it. And I'm just gonna change how the light's hitting it so you can start to see some of these wear and tear effects and lighting. Um, you can see some of the in-depth grain on it and that's, um, a final project of, let's close out of it and reopen it. And now you can actually see what it looks like when it's all said and done. And this is kind of how it turned out to be. And you can see right here, you can see those little scratches and things like that. You can see the wood grain, the depth of it, you know, from that normal map and obviously the colors themselves. So I just wanted to show you that, oh, obviously, I. Have a little animation on here too it's opening and closing the drawers but um this is just a quick little thing i wanted to show you um before we get into actually doing the sword so with all that out of the way uh, we're just gonna go file open Let's go ahead and get back to the sword. Save changes to untitled scene, don't save. All right, so I have the sword here. We already covered uh, diffuse, search color map, normal map, specular map. Um, now those are three core maps we're gonna be utilizing, but today we're just gonna change colors. So, and we kind of have an understanding how it works now, right? So when I go into here, every default model, it looks like is with a standard surface material. Um, and just to reiterate, now each material is going to have these things in different locations. So here, um, geometry is where it'll show the bump mapping. Um, on their specular tab, obviously, it's going to show the specular settings. And then under base, um, it's going to show your color and things like that. So now, 
we're gonna just start to change color. So the first thing I can do, and I'm, I'm just doing this really quickly, but we're gonna add four materials to this to get a little practice in and change each. We're gonna select four different um, materials and then we're also going to select four different colors for each part. And I'll just, just to quickly show you, you can change the color just by the click of a button basically. And I've changed this now to yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and just make it back to gray. That was a little bright for me, but um, the specular. Now you can change some of these settings in here. And basically if I were to bring this down, this little sample is kind of the best point, but if you'll see it black, it's basically becomes like a matte flat color. And now if I bring it up, you start to see that shine. Um, I'm not too familiar with this material, um, but you'll see how each one that makes a really sort of pinpoint light coming on it, how it refracts light, reflects light. Um, and anyway, so there's so many different settings in each one um, that you can play around with, but the three we focus on is the color, specular, and bump. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty and start changing some of these colors for us. And I'm gonna tap three on the keyboard and just go ahead and select the sphere to start. Now, in order to create a new material, um, I need to assign a new material basically, and I'm gonna have the sphere highlighted and hold right click and go to assign new material. Now in this material I have, in this, once I do that, I'll have this pop open. Um, if you don't have all the same, I've had students tell me that they don't have all the same materials that I have. If you don't have the same exact one, just select a different one. Um, it's not a big deal, not the end of the world. But now I can go to, um, well, we already talked about Blinn, I guess. So let's go to under Maya. Let's do Lambert. This used to be the standard uh, material for every model you created. Um, when you just were starting to, you know, open the file, a default material. And on this Lambert, this is Lambert 2. Um, let me make sure. Yep, that's it. Um, I'm going to rename it and call it uh, sword or no, let's, yeah, sword severe Lambert material. And I label everything with what it is at the end. And now a Lambert is a very basic, bare bones material. Um, I don't even think you can add a bump map, but I don't even think you can add a specular map. So. Um, anyway, this is your bare bones base um, material. It has no shine to it. It's just a flat matte color. Um, you can change a couple different things like incandescence is cool if you're gonna make something kind of have be like glowing like a, like a light bulb maybe. Um, but, and, or no, maybe not incandescence, ambient I think is what I meant. Ambience, the one I'm referring to. I'm sure incandescence can play a little bit in that, but um, you'll notice it gets much brighter. Um, and if you were to render it, it's actually pretty bright. Now, um, you can also add glow effects to things too, which is kind of cool. So you can do all types of things when you render it. Now you won't see it in here, but if you were to render it, you would. Um, now certain materials don't, and there's, there's so many different renderers out there in the world. Um, but we're gonna use the one that's in Maya called Arnold. And um, Arnold, the Arnold renderer, is unable to read Lambert, Blinn, uh, a number of others that we'll get to, Fong, is, I think we, we had up there. Um, but it's unable to read it. It can only read its own materials, so its own Arnold's uh, materials. And I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Um, but those are all the different settings, diffuse, translucence, um, transparency, there's a good one. So let me show you what that does. And now it's, let's turn off shading, wireframe unshaded. And now you'll see it's totally transparent. Now with a color like this, it if you wanted it to be like glass or something, so you could see through something, the Lambert material would probably be the worst material you could pick. Um, because it doesn't have any shine to it. So um, let's bring that back. And then let's go ahead and move on to the handle. But that's that's the bare bones of the, the Lambert material. Now, if I go to the 
handle here. Like I did that one swift click. I'm going to oh, just hold right click, assign new material. And in this case, um, we already talked about the blend. Um, but let's go into Arnold and let's make this one an AI standard surface. So you'll notice it looks much different. Um, and I need to go to the material, AI standard surface. And this material, do, 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 do. no, that's just standard surface. I want to go to AI standard surface. There we go. And I want to change the name of this to um, sword handle Arnold material. So now I know that that material is specifically for the Arnold render and that's coming up in a few weeks too and in the next labs we'll start to get into some rendering. But um, anyway, the AI standard surface is the, the, the biggest point of this one is that it's the only one that can be read by the Arnold render. The others can't like blend and, and even if it pulls it up, it doesn't pull it up well. Um, so we're going to primarily be using the Arnold uh, materials, but I wanted to cover some of the other basic ones. Now, it has all the same things. The base, you would go to straight to the color, um, the specularity, you can change the specularity of it, and then, you know, roughness and things like that, and you'll see how it, in the little sample, how it um, plays with it. Um, and then, oh, that's weird. Look at that. Anyway, and then uh, you can see in the sample what these things do. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you. Specular anistropy. Okay. Um, geometry. That's where you would locate your bump mapping on these when we get there. Um, but I want to change the colors on these. So on my handle, I'm going to select a different color. I'll make it... Uh, hmm... What color should I make it? Let's go brown. Let's go with brown. Let's see if I can kind of put together a brown here. There we go. So there is my handle. And now if I wanted to go back and change the color, so like on the sphere, I know that's Sword Sphere Lambert. I can just right click here. If you have a million things that pop up, by the way, you can do edit, delete all by type and history, and that'll wipe out all the extra stuff. I don't know if you remember that from the previous lab. So I just wanted to cover that real quick with you. So um, Sword Sphere Lambert material. This, we can change the color to red. And you see it's super, super bright. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything here. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's Nose. I like it. Um, so now I've got my red base handle down here at the bottom. I've got my um, handle in brown. Um, here I'm going to make this. I'll just keep working up. Uh, do, 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 do. do a quick select and then my little deselect trick. So now I've got everything selected on that. I'm going to hold right click and go to assign new material. Go to, did I do a blend already? I know we talked about it. I know I didn't do a fong. So I'll do a fong. And in this Fong material, I have uh, the real only difference is between this and a blend. I mean, I know the, the software reads um, how the material looks differently from one another. Um, but in terms of settings and things, the only one that I think is different is this cosine power, which see what it says if I hover over it. 
doesn't say anything. Fong. Oh. And we're going to rename this hilt. Okay. Hilt. Sword hilt material. Sword hilt material. All right. And. Oh, sword hilt. Fong material. So now I know what it is just by looking at it. And I'm going to change the color of this one as well to dark gray. And then now I've got three materials added to this. I have a Lambert, I have an AI standard surface, and then I also have a um, Fong. Now I'm going to, I'll do the last one as a blend. We're going to do this here and I'm going to select, let's do like a light gray. And, oh, I didn't even assign it a material, assign new material. Blend. I don't think I did anyway. Nope. And I'm going to rename this uh, Sword Blade uh, Blend Material. And switch to my Blend. And I'm going to make this a light gray. That'll work. And then. Um, so the blend, you can adjust the transparency, all these other things. I've actually kind of went into this one in detail. Um, the Fong's pretty similar. Lambert's are bare bones, flat. Um, but I just want you to see how the software, how they look different. Um, and on this, on my sphere sword blade, um, I just want to show you, I'm going to turn the transparency fully on and you can actually still see the blade based off of the specularity of it. So in my specular roll off, if I increase it all the way, now if I turn this specular roll off all the way down, now you can't see it at all. You see what I mean? But since it does have some specularity, I think by default it's at 0.7, um, you can actually see the blade even though it's still transparent. And that's the really cool thing about the different types of materials. So Let's go ahead and, um, and in comparison, let's just say the sphere. Let's turn this transparency all the way up. And now you can actually see because this has zero trans or er, specularity to it. And the sword does, you can't see this from any angle. Whereas you can see the sword, um, based off of the reflectivity of the light on it. So anyway, thought that was really important for you guys to know. And let's turn my transparency back down. And let's do the same thing for the transparency. And now I've got four different materials. All four of the materials are named. Um, and Fong, Lambert, Blinn, Arnold. If you don't have one of these in your in your Maya uh, software, select any other one. Um, you can shoot me a little message on Canvas or just add it to the, the notes that you can submit comments on inside the submission area. But um, if you do have any questions, please shoot me a message on Canvas inbox. That's what I'm here for. Um, any questions at all, concerns, whatever it might be. And I will... Uh, respond to you as quickly as possible. Um, one last thing I thought might be fun, reflectivity. Now that is actually pretty cool. Um, if you were to render this, let's see if it'll actually do it. No, it won't render it in here. Um, plus I don't have any lights. If you were to render it, it would actually come up as like a mirror. Rendering, render settings. Let's see if I can do something really quick for you. Um, 
Let's just see if it'll work. Yeah, it does. Um, let's see if it actually, that render can do the reflectivity. It might not be able to. Be cool if it could. If not, no worries. Um, but that's the cool thing about rendering is that you have so much capability to make things look cool. Oh, I did Arnold again. Render current frame. So it's not picking up the the reflectivity uh, properties. It's not able to do it in the, the standard basic render. Unfortunately, Arnold could do it, um, but I have materials that Arnold can't read on here. But for the submission, um, go ahead and submit your yeah, a screenshot really is good, um, but you can submit your Maya file if you'd like. Um, I can pretty much tell you. Uh, no, actually, you know what? Scratch that. Submit me your Maya file so I can actually look at it um, and make sure that you have the four different materials. Um, but other than that, one last thing before we go, I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to go to my AI standard surface. Now, if for instance, by accident, you do this, right? Now, every single model I create is going to be green because the AI standard surface one is the material that is uh, default um, when creating an object. So if that happens to you and you're like, oh my God, why is it green? You can always switch it back to gray or whatever you wanted to do. Um, but yeah, submit your Maya file, um, name all your uh, materials, um, just double check the rubric before submitting and let me know if you have any questions on Canvas Inbox. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this lab. I hope you learned uh, quite a bit about materials and texturing, at least an introduction to it. Um, and uh, we'll take, uh, We'll take it on to the next future labs here, a little foreshadowing into texturing, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, other than that, have a wonderful day uh, and see you later.